What's up everybody, this is Rook, and uh, we're going to kind of go over the engineering for the world record 170 way plan for Summerfest. And um, I won't take up too much of your time, I want to be thorough and brief, but uh, again, I think it's important that information is spread so we kind of have an idea of how we're doing this. Um, so, first of all, it's a seven plane formation. Uh, we have three diving airplanes and we have three floating airplanes on the backside here. Uh, we've had really good success with floating in the past and it kind of helps us from eating up a bunch of altitude uh, diving down at 200 miles an hour. Um, lead plane Sherpa, right trail, left trail are diving. Um, and we've done most all of the engineering that we've done or we've put into this uh, formation has been done before. Um, that being the pod on a pod on a pod, triple pods, and then the two pods off of the back of the bridge. Um, the only thing that's new this year is it's a 10-way base, uh, so that's going to be fun. Uh, probably a little bit more tricky to fly in the inside, uh, but we got a really good group of people, so I have the utmost faith that that's going to be successful. Um, so kind of moving right in, let's start with the Sherpa plane. Uh, we got the base coming out of the back. We're launching a six-way, and we got four people crawling in. Um, as you can imagine, we want to make sure the base is set and on heading prior to any of these first row stingers getting on. Um, we have uh, big streamers for uh, north, south, east, and west uh, to help aid you guys as you're coming in. In addition, we'll also have t-shirts on the north, south, east, and west lines uh, to help aid as well to find your sector and get in uh, efficiently. Um, the people behind the base and the Sherpa, it's pretty straightforward. You guys are coming in, uh, kind of filling in this sector right here. Um, it's important, and not just for the Sherpa, but most all of the airplanes, that you don't pass people. Uh, if you pass people and you arrive too early, you're just going to cause traffic because maybe the person isn't familiar with you know what you're looking at because they're not in your sight picture. You're just going to cause chaos. So it's important to, important to identify who's around you and the lineups, where they're docking on the formation. So as you jump out, you know kind of where you're going, who's around you, where their line is. Um, touching back in, uh, on the line of flight, <clears throat> it's super important that we keep it on line of flight. As you can imagine, if it moves just slightly on the side here, uh, how far it is going to be on the outside. Uh, one thing to note, too, while we're talking about that is that if you come out and you have to go around the formation in any way, it's so important that you don't just look directly at the formation, look where you're going. Because as you, as you can think, like there's tons of people that are gonna be docking at all times, all levels, uh, so it's important that we have the, like, the best awareness ever, like better than any of your other jumps awareness. Um, so again, 10 way base, uh, the Sherpa people are all diving, uh, moving into the right trail. Uh, this is a diving airplane as well. We've kind of engineered it where this group of floaters is leaving with the base. They're going to kind of be off just a little bit earlier um, because the base is kind of lethargic to get out of the airplane. These guys are not gripped, so they can kind of exit efficiently. And that makes these first row divers the actual people that we want to arrive first to the formation. These are the drag racers, like get there, get there fast, because then these people are going to kind of fill in behind you. These guys should have a good clean exit. There's only three in the door. Um, so uh, make sure that we're communicating how we're exiting so we can get a clean exit. Again, this plane right here is exiting with the base uh, as well as the left trail, and it's kind of the same design. These floaters are going to go with the base, that making these guys, the drag racers, to get there the quickest, kind of filling in these first row stinger slots. Um, moving down into the uh, lower part of the formation or the uh, floating side, uh, we have right right trail. Uh, again, these people are all going to leave, this entire airplane is going to leave with the super floater, which is number 148 here, which is uh, Mike Swanson. Uh, he did that slot for us in 2013, and it's probably one of the coolest slots there is, so uh, uh, I wish I could switch with them. But anyway, so again, these guys are going to kind of come out. Remember, if you're the floating side, you're going to be the last to dock. Uh, the closest people are going to be the ones last in the airplane. Uh, again, it's important as you exit the airplane that you exit in a floating position. Don't exit and dive down because remember the base is going to be behind you. And just as we were talking with the diving airplane, it's important that these people do not pass these people. It's kind of in a reverse order. These people in the back of the airplane will arrive first, second, third, fourth, so on and so forth. Again, kind of filling in this bottom sector here 
Um, I believe this is the uh, California pod, air, uh, golden nugget pod over here. Um, so again, be aware as you're approaching, know who's docking around you, know who you shouldn't pass. Uh, you know, we've always kind of taken the train uh, th thought of, you know, you could follow somebody, but if you're going to do that, make sure they're going to the right spot. Um, it's important and you can easily get lost uh, if somebody gets lost and you're following them and completely relying on somebody versus having your keys in the base and knowing where to arrive. Um, moving down to the right, right, right trail, uh, this formation is going to kind of be more in a V. We just needed to stick it on the paper like this. Uh, so again, this plane is going to be further to the right. Same thing, these guys have the long float, and these guys, are, you know, obviously the people in the back of the airplane have the short float. Again, don't pass people as you're getting to the formation. These guys are all leaving on that 148 of Mike Swanson's leaving. This whole plane starts to exit. The goal is to have all these floating airplanes exited and the last people passing the threshold of the door as this base is coming out. Uh, the timing worked really, really well last year, so we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Uh, now moving forward uh, to the sky van, this plane is going to be actually in trail of the Sherpa just to the left uh, or to the uh, just to the left. I'm sorry. So that way, if there's any incident and we have a premature coming out of the uh, Sherpa, it's going to clear that airplane with uh, no issues. These plane these people are all going out with the super floater number 148. And again, these are the first people there and so on and so forth. It's important that you don't pass people as you exit the airplane. Uh, moving over to left, left trail, again, floating airplane. This would be uh, the long floats, you know, obviously shorter, kind of working its way backwards, kind of echoing all these airplanes, that the first ones there should be the last ones out of the airplane. Again, important that you don't pass anybody. These guys are going to kind of fill in this sector right here. And then uh, moving into the right, left trail, I think we might have done this, but in case I didn't, uh, diving. Uh, these are the drag racers. These are the floaters. Um, moving in. So um, one thing to note is that uh, it's important too that when we get in this formation that we keep our cross partners. This thing should line up really really well and one thing that I've noticed from some of the old pictures of the records that I got of the 108, 69 and 138 um, is that these lines have a tendency to kind of start curving left or curving right. It's super important that we keep these lines looking just like they are in this diagram and the reason being is we got to have room for these little stinger guys to get in there and if this thing's curved way to the left or way to the right there's not a chance for these guys to get in here and, and dock um, so again make sure that when you get in these pod closer positions that you're looking through the base at the right people and that you're dragging it down a little bit you should be just a little bit below the base to help keep the fall rate going on the outside 10-way base is going to have a tendency to fall a little bit slower. Uh, we're going to, I mean, it's all big guys in the base, so uh, we'll try to do our best, but it has a tendency to do that just because of big round. I mean, we're all familiar with that. Uh, moving into the breakoff now, um, I know on some of the charts that we had sent out that just the blue is breaking off, and in talks and communications with some of the uh, organizers, it's not the best idea. Uh, we're more than likely going to drag out this pod closer as well and have these things track off in little sectors, meaning like, for example, 123 here is going to lead all these people off in a little pod track. Uh, same thing here, same thing here, and so on and so forth around the outside of the formation. Um, so as you were approaching, if you're one of these end pod closers, you want to make sure that you're the last person there um, because when, you when it's time to go at 7-5, you're going to want to just go backwards. If you take time to do a 180 and go, we're just eating up altitude and I'm in the base, so I want many people to be gone by the time I, uh, by the time it's our turn to track. So these outside guys, again, to reiterate, you guys should be the last ones there. You guys are going to be there for probably just a few seconds before we turn around and track away. Um, but again, you guys are all leading little clusters away from it, little little track pods, uh, and you guys have a quite a long track. The second wave are going to be these kind of orange guys minusing those pod closers. And then the third wave is going to be here on the interior. And then the final and fourth wave is going to be in the base. Um, it's important, too, that we remember that we're only going to do 90-degree uh, turns, um, only because like it can get pretty hectic if we don't uh, follow the left-hand pattern 90-degree turn. And the, the topic of, you know, I'm going to upsize for the record has been brought up. But if you think about it, it may not be the best solution. Uh, I was always taught to compete how we train. And if we're training to jump on a, you know, a VLO or Valkyrie, whatever it is, 
like we shouldn't change it up just because we're going to uh, the record. Also, you know, like if it's if everybody's going fast, it's like we're driving on the highway. And yes, it seems kind of chaotic because there's a lot of people. But if everybody's going 75 or 70, it actually has a nice flow to it. Nice left hand left left 90s um, for landing. But if you get the one guy that's going really, really slow, all of a sudden, all these little race cars have to kind of go around them. And it kind of creates a little bit of heck, a uh, little little bit of traffic. So again, if you're thinking about upsizing, just kind of take that to heart about you know being the slow guy in the fast lane kind of thing. Um, again, it's mandatory to have AADs. Uh, I can't stress it enough. I've had to call people and say that their kids are dead and they're not coming home, and I don't want to do that. And if putting a $1,200 AAD is the way that I can help not ever have to do that again, then I'm going to do it. So it's mandatory. There's no exceptions. And I'd hope that uh, everybody's kind of on the same page. Um, so that's Engineering 101. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me, rook at skydivechicago.com, uh, or hit me on the Facebook. And I'm super pumped up to jump with you guys. And again, the first goal is to be safe. And then the second goal is to uh, uh, have a record. And uh, I think everybody's kind of on the same page. We've got a really good group of people. And uh, showtime is in about a week. So see you guys when you get here.